I thought Oklahoma plays scared. That's what I that's yeah. what I saw. No, I, I I totally agree with you. Late in the game, that's certainly what I saw. I, th- I thought that there were there were a few calls in the game offensively from from Lincoln Riley. And listen, he's a young coach, and I think he's going to learn a lot from this. But this is a tough one to learn on because you got a historically good quarterback, a, a roster that can compete and and potentially not only just win this game, but maybe win the national championship. And you're learning your lessons as you go. He may never have a college quarterback as good as Baker Mayfield, and he might not ever have a team quite as good as this one, in particular on the offensive side. I know they're not great defensively. Okay, I want to talk about two play calls specifically. Okay. Okay, and and th- these two I thought were indicative of this entire conversation or narrative of the conservative nature with which Oklahoma played the late stages of that game. First of all, you can skewer the defense all you want, all you want, and, and justifiably so, but we knew Georgia was going to run the ball well. Okay, that that was not a real surprise for anybody. Well, they got they gained 300 yards. Yeah, I get it. I kind of thought they would gain at least 250, just judging on what Oklahoma had done. The key part of what Oklahoma's defense did, they got the scoop and score, the next series out, they forced a punt. Yeah. So, Colin, with five minutes to go, your Heisman Trophy winner is trotting on the field up seven. You got to win that game. That series was so conservative to the point that on third down, they ran one of the most mystifying plays. I still don't quite understand what they were trying to do. It's third down and three. It's about three minutes and 30 seconds left, three minutes and, and maybe 40 seconds First left. First down here, game could be over. Close to it. You're going to have to, what you're going to do is you're going to force Georgia to start burning their timeouts. Yes. Okay, so you start the process of the bleed out for the opposition if you just get this first down. And they ran a speed option to the short side of the field? Uh, And the guy they used. Oh, no. You're thinking about the second overtime speed option into the short side of the field. This one was regulation. They did it with Rodney Anderson. But you cannot – here's a quick wild theory of mine. You should not run the option – into the short side of the field, unless you're an option team, because you just don't quite understand how to do it. You got to attack the inside shoulder or the in man on the line of scrimmage. If you don't attack him, he can string you out. You're too close to your pitch man. Both things happened to Baker Mayfield. They didn't execute it. They punt the football away. Georgia goes down the field. Credit Jake Fromm. He made a couple of great plays. One, he eludes a rush. He gets a first down, another big third down completion. They score. Okay. They score. I thought they were pretty conservative. Maybe a poor play call on third down with 55 seconds left and all three timeouts. Now let's get to the one that I really want to talk about. It's first overtime. The defense, which had been shredded, got to stop. Colin, the reason you want to win the coin flip is to go on the field with a touchdown wins it mentality. That's what Oklahoma had. That's Their defense, which was brutal, Gotta stop. They forced a kick. That's all you wanted. Mayfield trots out there, and statistically, they're going to say he threw a pass, but he didn't. It was one of those little touch, kind of like Marquise yeah. Brown jet sweep type of things. So touchdown wins it, and he doesn't throw a pass. I'll go a step further. Imagine with me for a second. I'm going to just take you back, okay? So everybody, don't do this if you're driving, but close your eyes if you're in a cubicle and just think back to 2005. It was actually 2006, but 2005, Texas USC, great Rose Bowl, right? Iconic names and performers and coaches and the colors, and it's Texas and it's USC and it's the waning moments, right? And Vince Young is on the field, and you've got this sense that, like, no one's touching the ball but VY, right? Right? Imagine for a moment if Texas would have handed the football to a guy named Michael Houston. Do you know who Michael Houston is? No. He was a a player for Texas in 2005 that got three rushes on the season. And that's what Oklahoma did. And Oklahoma gave the ball on third and two with a touchdown wins it in the first overtime to Jordan Smallwood on a little sniffer back reverse into the short side. You have got to be kidding I, I, me. I could not. Listen, I never criticize coaching play calling. But that one is uh, uh, listen, just. First of all, at the end of the half, the squid you, kick. Haven't, you have not given up a kickoff touchdown return in six years. Six years. There's six seconds left, and you Oof. squib it. Basically, you went in with a 31-14 lead, and I'm, I'm not. you walk into that locker room, you're Superman. Oklahoma squibs it. Georgia gets it, runs a play, kicks a field goal. 
Georgia steals all the momentum. All Georgia's got to be thinking to herself, we played terrible. Yeah, and, and one stop, and we get a score, and it's a one-possession game, and that's exactly what happened. Good I, Lord. I tell you, it, it was – if I was an Oklahoma fan, I'd be I, would, angry. I would be sick. And and Lincoln Riley, I mean, bless his heart. He Can you imagine how sick he is? Because he's got to in, internalize all this. He's got to watch that film. He's got to – and we didn't even bring up the play that you mentioned, second overtime, first down after the pass – or excuse me, the offside, and he runs the same speed option in the short side of the field, this time with Kyler Murray uh, as, the, as the pitch man. Yeah. It was shocking. I, I do have a theory, and I, and I hope you appreciate this. Um, I have a, a theory that you can – be mentored and go to school and do all the things that you you can possibly do after you're kind of like past your adolescent years. And you can do all those things and that's all well and good, right? And you can better yourself. There's there's no question, but you are always who you were raised to be. Yes, yes. That's why I say you can't create tough. You can't. You're a tough kid or you're not. That's right. And I felt like in the fourth quarter, in the second half, we saw a, a coach that was raised by Mike Leach and not Bob Stoops. I saw Bob Stoops as a mentor, but Mike Leach was his football parent. Lincoln Riley. Lincoln Riley's he went football finesse. parent went finesse. It went, I, I, I don't think we're good enough, so I'm going to run trick plays every time I get a chance. I never saw the foundational Oklahoma offense that we saw in the first half. I did not see it in the second half. I didn't see tempo. I didn't see Rodney Anderson. I saw reverses, double passes, sniffer back reverses, speed option into the short side. It was not even close to the same offense. Think of how how methodical they were at the end. It was almost like Lincoln Riley kept unfolding that piece of paper and folding it back and forth. And it's like, hey, there's not new play calls that are going to appear on that sheet. <laughs> they are what they are. And and they Oklahoma lost that game without being Oklahoma, and I think that's what's going to really burn them. And I also want to give Georgia a lot of credit. Listen, Run game was tremendous. Defense was tremendous yes. in the second half, and Fromm was great by, by the way, late in the game. I, I always say, I'm not Visa. I'm not in the credit business. Okay, that's what Visa and MasterCard are in, American Express. I'm in the honesty business. Georgia, congrats. You're going to lose to Alabama. Congrats. But that was Oklahoma's game, yeah, and it, it happens all the time. And they didn't even play all that well. But I got a box score here. Oklahoma, first downs, third down conversion, passing yards, time of possession, penalties. Like, Oklahoma had the game. Uh, Georgia, congratulations. Uh, okay, before we go. Yeah. Okay, SEC Big Ten now. Yeah, it's been a big source of contention. Big Ten went 7-1, and one, but they, Alabama, Georgia's playing. Yeah, but I, this is what I don't quite understand about the whole argument is that this is exactly what we have said it is all year, which is top heavy, top heavy. And the, the parody in the big 10 is really good. And the coaching's way better. The, than the big coaching's 10. way better. So the big 10, the by the way, went seven and one in bowls, 14 and five Yeah. Uh, to your tweet on power five. That was easily the best bowl record. By the way, the SEC yesterday came within a play of LSU, Auburn, and Georgia all losing. Yeah, and, and South Carolina could have lost that game. Michigan kind of choked that game away. But that's – listen, this is not a bash against SEC. The SEC has two really great teams, great. and they're going to happen to play on Monday night. Terrific. Yeah, whereas uh, if I go to the restaurant known as the Big Ten, I can order the sixth thing off the menu. It's good. Uh, yeah, you you it's go really to the good. third thing off the menu with that SEC restaurant. Yeah, it's not very good. It's terrible. Honestly, the code coding people come in and they close the restaurant down. <laughs> Auburn's got four losses. LSU lost at home to Troy. Who's the fifth best team in the SEC? They don't have one. I don't think there is like the, one. The, the, yeah. yeah, I mean, like you can go to the fourth, fifth best team. It's in, like it's like one, two, and four, and then like eight, 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 eight. There's just a bunch of eights. All right. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.